still continuing with efforts to update our technology and things, and um, thank you for all the efforts that have been put into that. Okay, um, so uh, we now have our welcome uh, announcements time, and welcome everybody who's here. We want to uh, tell you that, uh, let's see, all right, first announcement, uh, Ben Lay, the son of former organist Don Lay, is very sick and going to hospital in New York for specialized treatment. As you know, this causes the family to have a lot of extra expenses, such as housing, food, and travel expenses in New York, as well as medical expenses. If you would like to participate in the love offering to assist the family with these expenses, you may put your contribution in the offering plate today or next Sunday. Please make sure to make the checks payable to Lord's First United Methodist Church and designated for Dunaway. If you want to make a cash contribution, please use an envelope from the pew rack and also make the designation for Dunaway. The love offering will be given to Donna in one check from the church. Okay, so uh, the next one is the Bible study. All right. We uh, didn't have the Bible study this past week, doing a Bible study on heaven and Randy Alcorn, but this coming Thursday, uh, December the 2nd at, at 6.30 in the Prince Fellowship Hall, we'll be having a, a starting back, okay? Now, uh, also, uh, we'd like to thank everyone for their generosity in contributing glasses for the Guatemala Project, and they'll be collected today and mailed the later December the 1st. And I have some glasses from Zoe Ann in my truck, so remind me to get them out of the truck and put them in the church, okay? All right. You know, you have a lot of things going on on a Sunday. People hand off things to you, take that, you know, so always remind me, I need your help. Okay. All right. Now, a trustee meeting will be held at Trinity United Methodist Church on December the 4th, and that is a follow-up to the special charge conference that was held last Sunday. Two trustees from each church are expected to attend. And Spencer Baxter and Charles Kennedy will serve as our delegates. Okay, our Christmas cantata is scheduled for Sunday, December the 12th at 3.30 p.m. Please mark your calendar and plan to attend. So there's been a lot of practice going into that. We're looking forward to it. About what, 3 o'clock? At 3 p.m. on uh, Sunday, December the 12th. Okay, all right. All right, and so also us... Uh, the Christmas Eve communion will be held at 6.30 p.m. That's on Christmas Eve. That's a wonderful time of celebration at this time of year, okay? Are there any other announcements to be made? Yes. Mm -hmm. I would like to thank everybody first and foremost for all the help we had yesterday. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah, it looks really good. It's good. Yes. It's a lot of fun. Hey there. Whoops, whoops. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate that. Oh, different, there's different colors. All kind of different colors. <laughs> yeah, okay. What did we need? Oh, okay, you, you, you. Oh, I can have one. Okay, go ahead. I'll take one. Could you repeat that? Could you repeat it? We couldn't hear it. Okay. There you go. I got one right here. I'm going to put it right here. We will be doing Christmas card exchange again this year. So if you want to bring uh, whoever you want to bring cards for, we will separate them, put them back here by the end of the night. 
and he made the pick them up, but we need them the Sunday before Christmas, since Christmas is on Saturday. So we did not take. I heard that as far as we about not take to get this on the schedule. That was separated. They gave them by the way. Thank you. None will be mailed, so just for people to leave. Okay. We'll now have a call to worship in the lighting of the Advent candle of hope. I have one more announcement, oh, okay. please. Um, some children's activities, Christmas events that are uh, upcoming on the on the third, which is this coming Friday. It's going to be the Lord's parade, and we're going to have a float, a trailer, and we're going to jump on it on the back and uh, be singing Christmas carols and having fun. So um, we would love for the kids or anyone else who would like to come to join us um, on Friday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We're going to meet right back here behind the church to decorate the float. Thank you. Sit with Mama. So we're going to decorate at 3 o'clock on Friday afternoon. Um, we're going to have just a brief meeting right after anyone who's interested would like to ride or sing or decorate or anything. Uh, please stay and, and speak with us right after the service today. And then on the 18th, that's a Saturday, the children are going to have a Christmas party at 3 p.m. 3 p.m. is the time. And then on the 19th, which is the Sunday after, we will do our Christmas program. It's called Worship the King. It's going to be amazing. But please invite um, everyone you know. All right, Nathan, come with me. This morning we'll be lighting um, the first uh, Advent candle, it's the candle of hope. Let's pray together. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Please stand for our hymn of adoration, hymn number 211, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
Our Old Testament lesson today comes from Jeremiah, chapter 33, verses 14 through 16. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called, the Lord, our righteous Savior. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We now have the time in the service where we share our joys and our concerns. Are there any joys to be shared? Hi, Shimon. The church looks beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stephanie? Oh, you got a solo on Christmas cantata? All right, good. All right, hey. Okay, Bo? You love church. Well, good. That is a joy. Glad that you do. Any others? Okay, Miriam? Um, I just want everybody to know they did finally take David off of his high-powered oxygen Wednesday, and he is now on regular oxygen. We're seeing how that goes. He is slowly improving. Um, hopefully they won't have to put him back on that, but they're on regular oxygen and have been since Wednesday. So slow, slow progress. Please keep us in your prayers. Uh -huh. We had a, a good visit with Ian, Ashley, and Nora, and we've got a wonderful announcement that we're going to have another grandbaby. Good. Good right. boy. All right. Okay. Okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Good to have, always good to have a relative with you. Yes, sister especially. Yes. Okay. Any other joy be shared? Okay. My cousin that I mentioned last week, her name is Carl. She got all good results back from her test. Okay. Okay. Good. That's good. Thank you. Yeah. Any other joy to be shared? Blessing. Okay. Uh, any concerns to be shared? Um, Mr. Jeff Brooks is having a uh, heart cath procedure Wednesday. Want to hold him up in prayer, okay? Shema. Um, uh, uh, having heart surgery, okay? All right. Okay. Any others? Okay. Caroline. My daughter is scheduled for C-section on December the twenty-eighth, and the baby right now on the way is two pounds. So. Okay. Well, okay. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, any other joy? I mean, concerns. This is a joy? I finally got to change my earrings. Oh, you did? Well, good for you. <laughs> okay, all right. All right, any other uh, concerns? Ms. Gemma? I don't know what I'm but I Okay, okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for Thanksgiving. I'm also concerned about those who do not have a home and know Jesus. And we, are, we should always be mindful of the fact that we're the church is meant to be the home for those who don't have a home and they'll just come to Him and come home to Him. Okay? Mm -hmm. I'm concerned for this whole world with all the stuff that's been going on in the news, different things, as we know. Any other concerns? We're in prayer for your family, yeah. for your aunt. Yeah, man, Carolyn passed away. Yesterday morning, we're doing a funeral tomorrow in March. Thank you for your prayers and support. Okay, uh, unspoken request. Many of those burdens on our hearts. Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer this time. Dear Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day, for this wonderful time of Thanksgiving, dear God. Truly, we are so thankful that we live in a wonderful country, a place of plenty. And dear God, even in the midst of the troubles that are coming upon us in the world, we are thankful for Jesus, our Savior, and the hope that we have for eternal life in Him. We 
We're thankful, Lord God, for the opportunity to witness and be steadfast in our faith. And thank the Lord for this morning to come here and to worship you in spirit and truth and to adore you and give glory to your holy name. Dear God, as we look out upon the world, we know there's all kinds of things going on. And it's easy to be troubled. And certainly, dear God, we are very, very concerned. But we also know that you are in charge, dear God, and that you have called us at such a time as this to live out the gospel and witness to the truth and testify of Jesus our Savior, what he did for us over 2,000 years ago, and what he offers us through his presence in our lives through the power of the Holy Spirit and the hope that we have for eternity. Dear God, we're thankful for this time of year. We look forward to celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. But also, Lord, in the back of our minds, we know that you're coming again. And the whole purpose of the first advent is to foreshadow and to show us that there is another coming. It's very, very important for us to realize that, dear God. Dear God, we've had many needs brought forth this Sunday, dear God, of people who need a special touch from you. Many people in our church, dear God, need healing. Many people are hurting, dear God, and lost their loved ones. And dear God, this time of year quite often brings memories that are hurtful because of things that have happened in the past, the loss in the past, and people who are no longer with us. But Lord, help us understand that knowing Jesus and having Jesus gives us hope, and gives everybody hope. And dear God, we pray for healing in the hearts and minds and the bodies of all of our members and the people in this community, dear God. And dear God, help us realize that salvation is near in Jesus Christ. And although things will not be perfect, if we trust you, dear God, we know that we can move on to perfection being molded in the image of Jesus, staying steadfast, and winning other people to him. Dear Lord, this morning, as we give offerings, we promise to be good stewards of what is given to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout this world. Lord, thank you for the young people in our church. Dear God, an opportunity to share with them the gospel and to share with them the importance of being a Christian. Help us, dear God, to remember this is an important charge that we have, dear God. Help us to keep it. It's a very holy charge, dear God. We're thankful for it. Now, Lord, we pray for your presence in this service, and we all pray together the prayer that you taught us to pray, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We'll now have the giving of our tithes and our offerings if the ushers will come forward.
to be thankful for and Christmas is next but what season are we going into now do you know what's winter about? well yes technically it will be winter in a couple weeks but what about advent have you ever heard the word advent no what does advent mean does anybody know what that means no it means the the arrival of a notable person thing or event it means somebody's coming you can say that Jesus is coming that's right. He is. And he, he already came one time, right? Yes. He came as, as a baby and he was born in Bethlehem. He chose to come to earth so that he could die for our sins. That's the whole purpose of him coming. Yes. And then one day, he's gone to heaven now. He rose from the dead after he was on the cross. And he's in heaven with Jesus now. And one day, he's going to come back again. That's going to be the second coming of Christ. That's another advent, right? Yes. And today, we lit the candle of hope. Okay? What does hope mean? You're really excited about something that's going to happen, right? Come here, James. It's a feeling or an expectation, a desire for a certain thing to happen, right? We're hopeful. We have hope that it's coming. But you know what? So I'm going to tell you something real quick. There's a couple different kinds of hope, in my opinion, because the first kind is when mom says, well, if we get the dishes done and we get all our housework done and we run all of our errands, then we can go to the park. Okay. So in your mind, you're thinking, oh, I hope we can go to the park. I hope, I hope it happens, but it may or may not happen because you got to, you know, <laughs> certain things got to happen or the water park. But you have certain things have to happen in order for that hope to come true, right? Mm -hmm. the, the next kind of hope is your bags are packed at the door. And the tickets are bought, and you're going to jump on the plane, and you know it's going to happen. That kind of hope, and you're so excited because, oh my goodness, we're going to get to go somewhere really cool. And you're excited about it, and you're expecting it to happen. And that's the kind of hope and advent that we want to think about and remember, okay? Because Jesus already came one time. He came to earth as a baby. He grew up and lived a sin sinless life. He died for us on the cross. He's in heaven now because he rose from the dead, but he's coming back. And that's the advent, that's the hope that we have to expect because we know he's coming and we're excited about it, okay? You understand what advent means now? Yes. Thinking and remembering and reflecting on what Christ has done and what he's going to do and he's coming back, okay? Come back to town. Let's pray. Let's pray real quick and then we'll go upstairs and have some fun. All right, ask me. Well, Christmas is Jesus' birthday. That's the whole purpose of having Christmas. Jesus is the gift that was given to all of us from God. So Jesus gave his son. That's why we celebrate Christmas. We celebrate by giving other people gifts. But the main gift is that Christ came in the form of a baby. And he was a gift for me. Okay? So let's pray together. Okay? Yes, and then no, let's pray. Christmas. Let's pray. Let's hold hands and pray. Jesus, thank you so much. Thank you that you chose to come to earth, Lord. We are hopeful and we're expecting your return, God. But in the meantime, I pray that you would help us to focus on you now, to remember, to reflect all that you have done for us, and to go tell other people about how good you are and about how you came to die in our place. We love you, Lord, and it's in your precious name that we pray. Amen. 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 Oh my goodness, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, go with David. You can go for David. Go with David. 
What a day that will be. You will find the words on the screen. Please stand as we sing. Verses 25 through 36. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. He told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Be careful, or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and anxieties of life, and that day will close on suddenly like a trap, for it will come on all those who live by the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch, and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen, and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Yes, there's three passages there, very important in the Bible, especially this day and time, I think, for us to read Matthew chapter 24, 21st chapter of Luke, and Mark chapter 13, that when you read them, say pretty much the same thing. It talks about the way things are in the world, and the way things are going to be in the world before Christ comes. Um, Jesus said, no man knows the day of the hour when it's going to happen. The simple fact is, is we need to be ready. And the point this morning is that Christmas time is sort of the harbinger of what's going to happen in the second. It's a foretelling and a forecasting of the way things are going to be. 
Now, there was a book called The Harbinger that was out very popular here a while back by uh, John Kahn and Sanic, a Jewish gentleman, in which he talked about how uh, the things that happened on September 11th was just a forecasting of the things that were going to come and happen as far as America and the nation of Israel and different things. And uh, there's a lot of things that are going to happen, but it's always important, I think, to understand, to look out there and see and understand the times and be ready. So Advent, this first Advent, is not just about celebrating Christmas. A lot of people get caught up in the presents and the partying and the different things. But the important thing for us Christians is this Advent. Advent, we need to understand, you've heard it said before, that Jesus is the reason for the season. You see houses that have a lot of decorations out there, but they don't have anything about Christ. Then you see houses that have a lot of decorations out there, but they also have a nativity scene and other things out there that indicate that home is a, a Christian home in all probability and that they understand what, what, what Christmas is all about. But at Christmas, the most important thing we can do as we celebrate and as we give gifts, we need to realize that Jesus is the presence, Emmanuel, God is with us, and he's the presence, that, and he is the present that is always present with us, okay? Now that's very important to understand. And uh, so we have this first advent and that, we're, that we celebrate, the first coming. And what happens is Jesus comes to share in our humanity. Um, he comes to take on flesh and go through the things that we have to go through in life. As beautiful as the Christmas story is and the way we celebrate it, it's important to understand how difficult it really was at that time. The angels were joyful as they announced his coming, but people did not realize at that time what was happening. It took them a while, it took several centuries as time went on in the early church for people to understand the significance. But when Jesus came, he came into a world that was very, very harsh, very, very cruel. The Romans were ruling the world at that time. And, and human, humanity was in darkness and caught up in cruelty and brutality. He was born in that manger and he lived life and he went through all the different things that we go through and he did it to take away our sins. He's the perfect sacrifice. He lived a sinless life. He came to save us from our sins and he came to help us live this life, not to just endure this life, but to actually live and to survive and thrive with a wonderful, joyful spirit because we know him and we have his Holy Spirit with us to help us in this world. But the simple fact is, it's the first advent. As much as we sing joy to the world and we're happy, we're haunted by what happened to Jesus as he lived his life. But he wonderfully rose again. And now we're looking forward to his coming again. So the first advent is very, very connected to the second advent. And when Jesus comes again, it's going to be a whole lot different. There's not going to be any more sin. We're going to be called home. We're going to live in a world where all the insecurities of this life and all the frailties of our flesh will be gone away. There'll be no more heartache, is that song. And I love that little song. It's not our hymn book, but I call it an old camp meeting hymn. What a day that will be when my Jesus I will see. It's going to be wonderful, y'all. It's going to be wonderful. And we don't want to miss it. And we want to really focus at this particular time and upon all that it means and what we're really about as we go about at Christmas time. And look, we get so caught up sometimes, and Christians are, are susceptible to this, and traveling and going and seeing and doing and buying presents and all that, it actually can become like work, you know. And sometimes the bills that we pile up, it's kind of like when it's all over, you got to pay them, you know. And it's just, and I just, we have a way of making a mess out of things that are supposed to be really good, decent, you know. And um, and but but the important thing is to understand if we can truly understand what it's all about. It's about pointing to that time when God is going to come again, and all that we're going through in this world is just uh, it's just a shakedown cruise for heaven. It says here in Romans 13, 11, It is full time now for you to wake up from sleep. 
for salvation is nearer to us now than we first believed. You know, there's a lot of stuff at the same time people we hear about the term woke, okay? We know how wacko that can be. But God wants us to be woke and awakened to him, the truth, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, that Jesus was the Son of God. You know, our creed says, uh, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. That is foundational truth of our faith, and that, that, that first coming, and that he's ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God the Father, and he's going to come again one day, the second advent, to judge the quick and the dead. We need to wake up to that and realize that that is what life is really all about. In Matthew 24, 42, Matthew says, Watch therefore, for you do not know on what the day the Lord is coming. You must also be ready. The things we have to ask ourselves today is this, are we ready? You see, <clears throat> between the first advent and the second advent, we're waiting. We have heaven in our hearts and peace in our heart, but we know that there's more, and we hunger and thirst for more, and for that ultimate consummation of human history. But we're on a journey of waiting. How many here have ever seen that little commercial with the kids, when the mom and dad are driving and the kids are in the back seat saying, are we there yet? Are we there yet? And over and over and over again, you know? Well, that's kind of where we are. Are we there yet? When are you coming back? Come on, Jesus, okay? But we need to be able to abide with Christ in such a way that there's a sweetness and a joy in this waiting. And we know, we have the peace that passes all understanding, that one day he's going to come again. And we don't need to be running around all over the place and being in a, in a hurry, and being upset about things no matter what happens. We need to realize that Jesus Christ is coming again. Emmanuel, God is with us. And you know, this is really a strange time of year for me because as most of you know, my first name is Emmanuel. And, I, <laughs> and my mom, I believe she got carried away when I was born. And I'll tell you what happened is my dad's best friend was Emmanuel. That was his name. And daddy and my, his best friend were on the way to Florence uh, in the Old McLeod's Hospital. And daddy had to pay the bill for me being born. And, and they were, he won, the, his friend Emmanuel, they were playing blackjack. And he wants some money off my, his friend. And so he got the money to pay the bill. And that's what he named me. He said it wasn't that real spiritual about it. You know? He was gambling, okay? But anyway, it is what it is. But yeah, this time of year when I hear all this, Emmanuel, I got to look around. You know, I wonder what's going on and things like that. But you know, we need to be looking around. We need to be in anticipation. We need to be haunted by the fact that he's coming. It's right around the corner. It really is. You know, life is really not that long. The older you get, the more you realize that. You know, you really do. And um, But anyway, uh, that second coming is something to really look forward to. And we don't need to be going off into the hills and the mountains and, and waiting. We just we need to be working in our communities and, and expressing our hope and faith in Jesus Christ and not get down, but to, to, to show our faith and live it in a wonderful, winsome, contagious way so that other people will come home, come home to Jesus and be a part of that that great, wonderful church and kingdom of God that God has, and all the wonderful things that God has planned for us. And so uh, I'm looking forward to moving on through the Christmas holidays, having a good time together. We got a, I, you know, I want us to do things and worship, but I also want us to just take time to sit back and really just savor and experience the goodness of God and the presence of the baby Jesus in our life and things like that. And uh, so it's a great, wonderful time of year. And uh, Santa Claus is coming to town, but Jesus is already here, okay? And he's going to always be there. Okay, that is the word of God for the people of God. Okay, we'll now have our affirmation of our Christian faith. Please stand, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. Please join us for our hymn of response, number 196, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. season, dear God. Strengthen us in the power of your Holy Spirit. Let us carry the presence of the baby Jesus deep within our hearts. Dear God, let our joy of our beliefs in the power of the Holy Spirit shine out to others, be a light that other people will want to know more about our faith and our belief. Strengthen us in every way, we pray, dear God. We ask this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 